Section 81 of the Book of Household Management. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kathy Caver. The Book of Household Management by Isabella Beaton. Recipes. Chapter 35, Part 1. To Make Yeast for Bread. 1716. Ingredients. One and one half ounces of hops, three quarts of water, one pound of bruised malt, half pint yeast. Mode. Boil the hops in the water for twenty minutes. Let it stand for about five minutes, then add it to one pound of bruised malt, prepared as for brewing. Let the mixture stand covered till about lukewarm, then put in not quite half pint of yeast. Keep it warm, and let it work three or four hours. Then put it into small half pint bottles. Ginger beer bottles are the best for the purpose. Cork them well, and tie them down. The yeast is now ready for use. It will keep good for a few weeks, and one bottle will be found sufficient for eighteen pounds of flour. When required for use, boil three pounds of potatoes without salt, mash them in the same water in which they were boiled, and rub them through a colander. Stir in about half a pound of flour, then put in the yeast, pour it in the middle of the flour, and let it stand warm on the hearth all night, and in the morning let it be quite warm when it is needed. The bottles of yeast require very careful opening, as it is generally exceedingly ripe. Time, twenty minutes to boil the hops in water, the yeast to work three or four hours. Sufficient, half pint sufficient for eighteen pounds of flour. Kirkleatham Yeast, 1717. Ingredients, two ounces of hops, four quarts of water, half pound of flour, half pint of yeast. Mode. Boil the hops in water for twenty minutes. Strain and mix with the liquid half pound of flour and not quite half pint of yeast. Bottle it up and tie the corks down. When wanted for use, boil potatoes according to the quantity of bread to be made. About three pounds are sufficient for about a peck of flour. Mash them, add to them half pound of flour, and mix about half pint of the yeast with them. Let this mixture stand all day, and lay the bread to rise the night before it is wanted. Time, twenty minutes to boil the hops in water. Sufficient, half pint of this yeast sufficient for a peck of flour, or rather more. To make good homemade bread. Miss Acton's Recipe. 1718. Ingredients. One quartern of flour, one large tablespoonful of solid brewer's yeast, or nearly one ounce of fresh German yeast, one and one quarter to one and one half pint of warm milk and water. Illustration. Cottage loaf. Illustration. Tin bread. Mode. Put the flour into a large earthenware bowl or deep pan. Then with a strong metal or wooden spoon, hollow out the middle, but do not clear it entirely away from the bottom of the pan, as, in that case, the sponge, or leaven, as it was formerly termed, would stick to it, which it ought not to do. Next take either a large tablespoonful of brewer's yeast, which has been rendered solid by mixing it with plenty of cold water, and letting it afterwards stand to settle for a day and night or nearly an ounce of German yeast. Put it into a large basin and proceed to mix it so that it shall be as smooth as cream, with three-quarter pint of warm milk and water, or with water only, though even a very little milk will much improve the bread. Pour the yeast into the hole made in the flour, and stir into it as much of that which lies round it as will make a thick batter, in which there must be no lumps. Strew plenty of flour on the top. Throw a thick, clean cloth over, and set it where the air is warm, but do not place it upon the kitchen fender, 
for it will become too much heated there. Look at it from time to time. When it has been laid for nearly an hour, and when the yeast has risen and broken through the flour so that bubbles appear in it, you will know that it is ready to be made up into dough. Then place the pan on a strong chair or dresser or table of convenient height. Pour into the sponge the remainder of the warm milk and water. Stir into it as much of the flour as you can with the spoon. Then wipe it out clean with your fingers and lay it aside. Next, take plenty of the remaining flour, throw it on top of the leaven, and begin with the knuckles of both hands to knead it well. When the flour is nearly all kneaded in, begin to draw the edges of the dough toward the middle in order to mix the whole thoroughly. And when it is free from flour and lumps and crumbs, and does not stick to the hands when touched, it will be done, and may again be covered with the cloth and left to rise a second time. In three-quarters hour look at it, and should it have swollen very much and begin to crack, it will be light enough to bake. Turn it then onto a pasteboard or very clean dresser, and with a large sharp knife divide it in two. Make it up quickly into loaves and dispatch it to the oven. Make one or two incisions across the top of the loaves, as they will rise more easily if this be done. If baked in tins or pans, rub them with a tiny piece of butter laid on a piece of clean paper, to prevent the dough from sticking to them. All bread should be turned upside down, or on its side, as soon as it is drawn from the oven. If this be neglected, the under part of the loaves will become wet and blistered from the steam, which cannot then escape from them. To make the dough without setting a sponge, merely mix the yeast with the greater part of the warm milk and water, and wet up the whole of the flour at once after a little salt has been stirred in, proceeding exactly in every other respect as in the directions just given. As the dough will soften in the rising, it should be made quite firm at first, or it will be too lithe by the time it is ready for the oven. Illustration Italian Millet Time To be left to rise an hour the first time, three-quarter hour the second time, to be baked from one to one and one-quarter hour, or baked in one loaf from one and a half to two hours. Italian millet, or great Indian millet, is cultivated in Egypt and Nubia, where it is called dura, and is used as human food as well as for the fermentation of beer. It will grow on poor soils and is extremely productive. It has been introduced into Italy, where they make a coarse bread from it, and it is also employed in pastry and puddings. They also use it for feeding horses and domestic fowls. It is the largest variety, growing to a height of six feet, but it requires a warm climate and will not ripen in this country. A yellow variety, called golden millet, is sold in the grocer's shops for making puddings, and is very delicate and wholesome. To make a peck of good bread. 1719. Ingredients. 3 pounds of potatoes, 6 pints of cold water, half pint of good yeast, a peck of flour, 2 ounces of salt. Mode. Peel and boil the potatoes, beat them to a cream while warm, then add 1 pint of cold water. Strain through a colander and add to it half pint of good yeast, which should have been put in water overnight to take off its bitterness. Stir all well together with a wooden spoon, and pour the mixture into the center of the flour. Mix it to the substance of cream, cover it over closely, and let it remain near the fire for an hour. Then add the five pints of water, milk warm, with two ounces of salt. Pour this in and mix the whole to a nice light dough. Let it remain for about two hours. Then make it into seven loaves, and bake for about one and one-half hour in a good oven. When baked, the bread should weigh nearly twenty pounds. 
time about one and one half hour. The red varieties of wheat are generally hardier and more easily grown than the white sorts, and, although of less value to the miller, they are fully more profitable to the grower, in consequence of the better crops which they produce. Another advantage the red wheats possess is their comparative immunity from the attacks of mildew and fly. The best English wheat comes from counties of Kent and Essex, the qualities under these heads always bearing a higher price than others, as will be seen by the periodical lists in the journals. Rice Bread 1720 Ingredients To every pound of rice allow four pounds of wheat flour, nearly three tablespoonfuls of yeast, one quarter ounce of salt. Mode Boil the rice in water until it is quite tender. Pour off the water and put the rice, before it is cold, to the flour. Mix these well together with the yeast, salt, and sufficient warm water to make the whole into a smooth dough. Let it rise by the side of the fire, then form it into loaves and bake them from one and a half to two hours, according to their size. If the rice is boiled in milk instead of water, it makes very delicious bread or cakes. When boiled in this manner, it may be mixed with the flour without straining the liquid from it. Time, one and one half to two hours. Indian Corn Flour Bread, 1721. Ingredients. To four pounds of flour, allow two pounds of Indian corn flour, two tablespoonfuls of yeast, three pints of warm water, one quarter ounce of salt. Mode. Mix the two flours well together with the salt. Make a hole in the center and stir the yeast up well with half pint of the warm water. Put this into the middle of the flour and mix enough of it with the yeast to make a thin batter. Throw a little flour over the surface of this batter, cover the hole with a thick cloth, and set it to rise in a warm place. When the batter has nicely risen, work the whole to a nice smooth dough, adding the water as required. Knead it well and mold the dough into loaves. Let them rise for nearly half hour, then put them into a well-heated oven. If made into two loaves, they will require from one and one-half to two hours baking. Time, one and one-half to two hours. Illustration Maize Plant Illustration Ear of Maize Maize Next to wheat and rice, maize is the grain most used in the nourishment of man. In Asia, Africa, and America, it is the principal daily food of a large portion of the population, especially of the colonists. In some of the provinces of France, too, it is consumed in large quantities. There are eight varieties of the maize. The most productive is the maize of Cusco. The flower of maize is yellow, and it contains an oily matter, which, when fresh, gives it an agreeable flavor and odor. But the action of the air on it soon develops rancidity. If carried any distance, it should be stored away in airtight vessels. An excellent soup is prepared with meat and maize flour. The inhabitants of some countries, where wheat is scarce, make, with maize and water, or milk and salt, a kind of biscuit which is pleasant in taste, but indigestible. Some of the preparations of maize flour are very good, and when partaken in moderation, suitable food for almost everybody. Soda Bread 1722 Ingredients to every two pounds of flour, allow one teaspoonful of tartaric acid, one teaspoonful of salt, one teaspoonful of carbonate of soda, two breakfast cupfuls of cold milk. Mode. Let the tartaric acid and salt be reduced to the finest possible powder. Then mix them well with the flour. Dissolve the soda in the milk and pour it several times from one basin to another, before adding it to the flour. 
Work the whole quickly into a light dough, divide it into two loaves, and put them into a well-heated oven immediately, and bake for an hour. Sour milk or buttermilk may be used, but then a little less acid will be needed. Time, one hour. Polish and Pomeranian wheat are accounted by authorities most excellent. Large raft-like barges convey this grain down the rivers from the interior of the country to the seaports. This corn is described as being white, hard, and thin-skinned, and it yields a large quantity of flour, having a small proportion of bran. Excellent Rolls, 1723. Ingredients. To every pound of flour allow one ounce of butter, one quarter pint of milk, one large teaspoonful of yeast, a little salt. Illustration Rolls Mode Warm the butter in the milk, add it to the yeast and salt, and mix these ingredients well together. Put the flour into a pan, stir in the above ingredients, and let the dough rise, covered in a warm place. Knead it well, make it into rolls, let them rise again for a few minutes, and bake in a quick oven. Richer rolls may be made by adding one or two eggs and a larger proportion of butter, and their appearance improved by brushing the tops over with yolk of egg or a little milk. Time. One pound of flour divided into six rolls from 15 to 20 minutes. Hot Rolls, 1724. This dish, although very unwholesome and indigestible, is nevertheless a great favorite, and eaten by many persons. As soon as the rolls come from the bakers, they should be put into the oven, which, in the early part of the morning, is sure not to be very hot, and the rolls must not be buttered until wanted. When they are quite hot, divide them lengthwise into three. Put some thin flakes of good butter between the slices, press the rolls together, and put them in the oven for a minute or two, but not longer, or the butter would oil. Take them out of the oven, spread the butter equally over, divide the rolls in half, and put them on to a very hot, clean dish, and send them instantly to table. To Make Dry Toast, 1725 to make dry toast properly, a great deal of attention is required, much more, indeed, than people generally suppose. Never use new bread for making any kind of toast, as it eats heavy and, besides, it is very extravagant. Procure a loaf of household bread about two days old. Cut off as many slices as may be required, not quite quarter inch in thickness. Trim off the crusts and ragged edges. Put the bread on a toasting fork and hold it before a very clear fire. Move it backwards and forwards until the bread is nicely colored. Then turn it and toast the other side, and do not place it so near the fire that it blackens. Dry toast should be more gradually made than buttered toast, as its great beauty consists in its crispness, and this cannot be attained unless the process is slow and the bread is allowed gradually to color. It should never be made long before it is wanted, as it soon becomes tough, unless placed on the fender in front of the fire. As soon as each piece is ready, it should be put into a rack or stood upon its edges, and sent quickly to table. To make hot buttered toast, 1726. A loaf of household bread about two days old answers for making toast better than cottage bread, the latter not being a good shape and too crusty for the purpose. Cut as many nice even slices as may be required, rather more than one quarter inch in thickness, and toast them before a very bright fire, without allowing the bread to blacken, which spoils the appearance and flavor of all toast. When of a nice color on both sides, put it on a hot plate, divide some good butter into small pieces, place them on the toast, 
Set this before the fire, and when the butter is just beginning to melt, spread it lightly over the toast. Trim off the crust and ragged edges. Divide each round into four pieces, and send the toast quickly to table. Some persons cut the slices of toast across from corner to corner, so making the pieces of a three-cornered shape. Sawyer recommends that each slice should be cut into pieces as soon as it is buttered and when all are ready, that they should be piled lightly on the dish they are intended to be served on. He says that by cutting through four or five slices at a time, all the butter is squeezed out of the upper ones while the bottom one is swimming in fat liquid. It is highly essential to use good butter for making this dish. Muffins, 1727. Ingredients. To every quart of milk, allow one and one-half ounce of German yeast, a little salt, flour. Illustration, muffins. Mode. Warm the milk, add it to the yeast, and mix these well together. Put them into a pan and stir in sufficient flour to make the whole into a dough of rather a soft consistence. Cover it over with a cloth and place it in a warm place to rise. And when light and nicely risen, divide the dough into pieces and round them to the proper shape with the hands. Place them in a layer of flour about two inches thick on wooden trays and let them rise again. When this is effected, they will each exhibit a semi-globular shape. Then place them carefully on a hot plate or stove, and bake them until they are slightly browned, turning them when they are done on one side. Muffins are not easily made, and are more generally purchased than manufactured at home. To toast them, divide the edge of the muffin all around by pulling it open to the depth of about an inch with the fingers. Put it on a toasting fork and hold it before a very clear fire until one side is nicely browned, not burnt. Turn and toast it on the other. Do not toast them too quickly as, if this is done, the middle of the muffin will not be warmed through. When done, divide them by pulling them open. Butter them slightly on both sides Put them together again and cut them into halves. When sufficient are toasted and buttered, pile them on a very hot dish and send them very quickly to table. Time from 20 minutes to half hour to bake them. Sufficient. Allow one muffin to each person. Crumpets. Illustration Crumpets. 1728. These are made in the same manner as muffins only in making the mixture let it be more like batter than dough. Let it rise for about half hour. Pour it into iron rings, which should be ready on a hot plate. Bake them, and when one side appears done, turn them quickly on the other. To toast them, have ready a very bright, clear fire. Put the crumpet on a toasting fork and hold it before the fire, not too close, until it is nicely brown on one side, but do not allow it to blacken. Turn it and brown the other side, then spread it with good butter, cut it in half, and when all are done, pile them on a hot dish and send them quickly to table. Muffins and crumpets should always be served on separate dishes, and both toasted and served as expeditiously as possible. Time from 10 to 15 minutes to bake them. Sufficient. Allow two crumpets to each person. Plain buns, 1729. Ingredients. To every two pounds of flour, allow six ounces of moist sugar, one half gill of yeast, one half pint of milk, one half pound of butter, warm milk. Mode. Put the flour into a basin, Mix the sugar well with it, make a hole in the center, and stir in the yeast and milk, which should be lukewarm, with enough of the flour to make it the thickness of cream. Cover the basin over with a cloth, and let the sponge rise in a warm place, 
which will be accomplished in about one and one half hour. Melt the butter, but do not allow it to oil. Stir it into the other ingredients with enough warm milk to make the whole into a soft dough. Then mold it into buns about the size of an egg. Lay them in rows quite three inches apart. Set them again in a warm place until they have risen to double their size. Then put them into a good brisk oven, and just before they are done, wash them over with a little milk. From 15 to 20 minutes will be required to bake them nicely. These buns may be varied by adding a few currants, candied peel, or caraway seeds to the other ingredients, and the above mixture answers for hot cross buns by putting in a little ground allspice and by pressing a tin mold in the form of a cross in the center of the bun. Time, 15 to 20 minutes. Average cost, 1 pence each. Sufficient to make 18 buns. To make good plain buns, 1730. Ingredients. 1 pound of flour, 6 ounces of good butter, 1 quarter pound of sugar, 1 egg, nearly one quarter pint of milk, two small teaspoonfuls of baking powder, a few drops of essence of lemon. Mode. Warm the butter without oiling it. Beat it with a wooden spoon. Stir the flour in gradually with the sugar and mix these ingredients well together. Make the milk lukewarm. Beat up with it the yolk of the egg and the essence of lemon and stir these to the flour and see. Add the baking powder, beat the dough well for about 10 minutes, divide it into 24 pieces, put them into buttered tins or cups, and bake in a brisk oven from 20 to 30 minutes. Time, 20 to 30 minutes, average cost, one shilling. Sufficient to make 12 buns, seasonable at any time. Light buns. Illustration Buns 1731 Ingredients 1 half teaspoonful of tartaric acid 1 half teaspoonful of bicarbonate of soda 1 pound of flour 2 ounces of butter 2 ounces of loaf sugar 1 quarter pound of currants or raisins When liked, a few caraway seeds Half pint of cold new milk one egg. Mode. Rub the tartaric acid, soda, and flour all together through a hair sieve. Work the butter into the flour. Add the sugar, currants, and caraway seeds when the flavor of them latter is liked. Mix all these ingredients well together. Make a hole in the middle of the flour and pour in the milk mixed with the egg, which should be well beaten. Mix quickly and set the dough with a fork on baking tins and bake the buns for about 20 minutes. This mixture makes a very good cake and if put into a tin should be baked one and one half hour. The same quantity of flour, soda, and tartaric acid with one half pint of milk and a little salt will make either bread or tea cakes if wanted quickly. Time, 20 minutes for the buns, if made into a cake, one and one half hour. Sufficient to make about 12 buns. Victoria Buns, 1732. Ingredients, 2 ounces of pounded loaf sugar, 1 egg, 1 and one half ounce of ground rice, 2 ounces of butter, 1 and one half ounces of currants, a few thin slices of candied peel, flour. Mode. Whisk the egg, stir in the sugar, and beat these ingredients well together. Beat the butter to a cream, stir in the ground rice, currants, and candied peel, and as much flour as will make it of such a consistency that it may be rolled into seven or eight balls. Put these on to a buttered tin and bake them from one half to three quarter hour. They should be put into the oven immediately or they will become heavy and the oven should be tolerably brisk. Time, 
one half to three quarter hour, average cost six pence, sufficient to make seven or eight buns, seasonable at any time. Italian Rusks, 1733. A stale Savoy or lemon cake may be converted into very good rusks in the following manner. Cut the cake into slices, divide each slice in two, put them on a baking sheet in a slow oven, and when they are of a nice brown and quite hard, they are done. They should be kept in a closed tin canister in a dry place to preserve their crispness. Illustration Panicled Millet Panicled Millet this is the smallest seeded of the corn plants, being a true grass, but the number of the seeds in each ear makes up for their size. It grows in sandy soils that will not do for the cultivation of many other kinds of grain, and forms the chief sustenance in the arid districts of Arabia, Syria, Nubia, and parts of India. It is not cultivated in England, being principally confined to the east. The nations who make use of it grind it in the primitive manner between two stones and make it into a diet which cannot be properly called bread, but rather a kind of soft, thin cake, half-baked. When we take into account that the Arabians are fond of lizards and locusts as articles of food, their cuisine altogether is scarcely a tempting one. To make rusks Suffolk recipe 1734 ingredients to every pound of flour allow two ounces of butter one quarter pint of milk two ounces of loaf sugar three eggs one tablespoonful of yeast illustration rusks mode put the milk and butter into a saucepan and keep shaking it round until the latter is melted Put the flour into a basin with the sugar. Mix these well together and beat the eggs. Stir them with the yeast to the milk and butter, and with this liquid work the flour into a smooth dough. Cover a cloth over the basin and leave the dough to rise by the side of the fire. Then knead it and divide it into twelve pieces. Place them in a brisk oven and bake for about twenty minutes. Take the rusks out break them in half, and then set them in the oven to get crisp on the other side. When cold, they should be put into tin canisters to keep them dry, and if intended for the cheese course, the sifted sugar should be omitted. Time, 20 minutes to bake the rusks, 5 minutes to render them crisp after being divided. Average cost, 8 pence. Sufficient to make 2 dozen rusks, seasonable at any time. End of section 81